Morning, folks. It's a Sunday morning for me, and uh, soap today is going to be brought to us by Razor Rock. This one here is the 1X, and it comes in a container looking like this. It is the big glass jar type. Uh, I'll have a link down below for a lot of this stuff. Uh, this one here, though, if I remember correctly, I found the aftershave still listed, but the uh, soap was no longer listed, so I don't know if that means that they sold out of it or or what, but it, uh, this is about eight and a half ounces of soap, 8.4, 8.5 ounces. And if you prefer the other, uh, <laughs> the other measurement, it's 250 milliliters. Anyhow, that's according to the label. It's, uh, I like, like it when it's like this. This is pretty cool. Uh, this is what it looks like on the inside. It is filled all the way up to the top. It is a very soft soap. Uh, probably considered a crope in my opinion. Uh, some of the scent that you might be able to pick up uh, from, from this one here, and yes, it is uh, that label is familiar if you've been around for a moment. Uh, you might pick up some citrus, some jasmine, some rose, uh, fig, musk, amber, peach, hay, tonka bean. Yeah, that if your nose is sophisticated and pick all that out, <laughs> that might be what you smell. For me, uh, yeah, no, <laughs> it just smells good to me. And here's the matching aftershave here, uh, in the typical, what, 3.4 ounces. But, uh, yeah, it does. It smells really nice. Very pleasant to my nose. I got it whipped up here in a smooth bottom bowl. We've got a thrift store. You can kind of see it is wet, not necessarily drippy, but yeah, it's just almost in other words continue dripping just one drip it take a little while but it might drip again this is with a uh, brush from colorado razor designs and uh, it's got a 26 millimeter synthetic knot and uh it's you could just smell it just as soon as i started whipping it up <laughs> waist level it, it's just a really pleasant scent especially for a sunday morning Nothing overwhelming in my opinion. So if, you, if you're looking for something that doesn't overpower you, something that's kind of what might be considered middle of the road, uh, not necessarily scent strength, but just, you know, just the, the scent itself, it, this, this one here just might be up your alley. I've got uh, my Shavette here. This is a uh, Focus Razor here. This one here is a uh, Focus Slim uh, Aluminum. Uh, as you can tell, it's a very thin design very lightweight i think it weighs near an ounce something like that it doesn't weigh a whole lot and uh, you can kind of see the loading mechanism there where it makes it pretty unique and there's the blade reveal which there's a persona x series blade in there it is preferred according from what i understand when it comes to these kind of shavers as well as like the uh focus dynamic vivo and that sort of thing that you use a, a double-edged blade that's snapped in half it provides a little bit more tension uh, for the uh, loading uh, for me, uh, my very first Focus Dynamic uh, single edge shaver never ran any problems because it had a very tight tolerance. My Dynamic, the Evo though, uh, the tolerance seemed to be a little bit different, so it would be more preferred that the, uh, got something in my hair, it would be preferred to use a DE snapped in half because those curled edges help provide just a little bit more tension. And this one here, I've used pre-cut ones in this one here without a problem. But uh, like I said, you know, over time, and it maybe just depend on which one you get. I still got something right there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, live video, right? Uh, that the, uh, uh, you might prefer, in other words, using a DE blade snapped in half. I've already put a hot towel to the face this morning. And go ahead and get started with the pre-shaved cube, cube, which is what's left of it, the holiday version. Not the one that is currently on sale. It would be, I guess you might say, last year's version. And... Uh, also, I should make mention a routine that I do when I'm shaving with a shave vet or a straight razor over to the side that hot towel I used this morning uh, prior to starting the video. It's sitting off over here and that's what I'm going to wipe uh, my uh, shaving cream off in on to help keep my sink water clean. So uh, just a, I guess you might say a, a plus side for shaving with a shave vet or a straight razor. You could do something like that and uh, keep your sink water clean and if you're subscribed to the thought process that keeping your straight razor as much as you can out of water that would be a helpful thing to do one of the things i have noticed here here of late is uh my face uh the the pre-shave soap is still working just fine 
but it is that time of the year that for me, my face seems to benefit more from a uh, pre-shave oil. And uh, so in other words, I'm going to try to make it to Christmas with this uh, cube, what's left of it, if it makes it. But if Christmas gets here, going into the beginning of the year, and I still have some left, I'm going to switch over to the pre-shave oil and uh, I'm going to go that direction because my face just feels like it's th at that point where it needs it. My experience with pre-shave oil is that um, I noticed on the post end of the shave, I can tell the difference with pre-shave oil. Uh, and that's just my face. You know, yours could be somewhat different. You may not want to use oil at all. There's different uh, thought process on the oils because uh, depending on how much oil, try not to drip this everywhere, depending on how much oil you put on your face and your desired use, uh, the thought is that that oil ends up in your brush, in a towel, whatever you happen to use with your shave routine, it would end up in the, those items. And some people think that that's not such a good idea. Now for me, because I rotate out so much in the way of razors and brushes and all that cool stuff. In other words, my shave gear, I rotate in and out so much. I don't really notice it that much uh, in my shave gear. But if you have a smaller shave den, if you will, you might notice that sort of thing. And it might bother you in your... Uh, maybe in your synthetic knots that you kind of tell that the oil is sticking around a little bit longer, which means you'll have to clean it out a lot more often than if you're just using pre-shave soap or nothing at all as far as that goes. We'll go ahead and get started with this um, shaver here. And um, I do prefer my <laughs> lather to be somewhat wet and or drippy uh, when I'm shaving with a shave bed or with a, uh, a straight razor. It does help with the slickness and the glide. You will notice that, uh, yeah, this does take a certain amount of concentration. <laughs> you need to be focused because um, it will let you know when you slip up <laughs> and don't give it all the attention that it needs. Now, I have to say, the past few days have been kind of busy. Not only work-wise, but how you say family life. My son, he's in his senior year in high school, and he is uh, involved in to get you might see the extracurricular activities. In other words, band, uh, robotics, and part of esports. And esports ate up Saturday, big time. <laughs> the event started at ten. It was supposed to end at six. It ran closer to what was it, twenty till seven when it was finally wrapping up. Uh, yeah, pretty much an all-day event. And plus, I was the eSport Uber. So, there there was that going on. <laughs> but it was quite an event. It was taking place at one of the high schools here. Union High School, which is, technically speaking, in Tulsa. And uh, uh, the there was, I think, four four things going on at the same time at the and there was a at the bare minimum uh as it goes for pcs uh gaming there was at least 30 pcs set up and then of course you got the xbox and then you had to switch uh N nintendo switch thing going on so yeah it was a uh, a lot of kids there and uh, they stayed there most of them stayed there for the whole entire event supporting their you know favorite school and whatnot My son, he was part of what they, the game is called Valorant, and he was part of that group there, and they managed to pull off a third place win. And of course, you know, it's a real exciting, you know, they, they show up, you know, at the beginning of the day, they all got the same kind of jerseys on and their names on there. They're, you know, not real names, but you know, their player names and so on and so forth. And it was uh, all exciting then at the end you know they get their uh, their medals and their trophy you know for third place and everything is quite exciting for them
it was pretty cool. Um, not in that I understood what was all going on. <laughs> because, um, no, my gaming days uh, were back in the days when you go to the arcade with the roller quarters at the pinball machine. Yeah, those are my gaming days for the most part. Uh, yeah, um, the only thing remotely close to that is when I had a Commodore 64 and you get the magazine when I was at PC World or something of the sort. Some, uh, some computer magazine and learning how to write lines of code uh, for my Commodore 64. And this was before there was an internet. So, yeah, those were my days a long time ago. <laughs> long before the internet was around. So there was no thing called eSports. And... Uh, I guess you might say there's a little bit on the technical side. Things were quite expensive back then, too. Not a lot like the, how they are now, but, uh, for instance, uh, EA's Electronic Arts, in other words, uh, that uh, company has been around for quite a while, and they were one of the companies that made games for Commodore 64 on floppy disk, yes. So the hard drives back then for the Commodore 64 I end up uh, buying two of them to help make copies and transferring information and whatnot. Those bad boys back in the early 80s were running like $250 a piece. Not cheap. Especially back then. That was a lot of money. <laughs> two hard drives and then I had a 19-inch TV for my monitor. And then, of course, you know, the keyboard, which was the computer also. And, oh yeah, that was a long time ago. And, uh, like I say, learning how to write those lines of code. And then you got to figuring out... Uh, these games that we'd buy, there would be like three of us when I was working at Quick Trip, a convenience store. And uh, got something right over here. Um, we would, uh, all three of us would go in together to help split the cost. And some of these games, you couldn't always make three copies, in other words, for all three of us. So we have to figure out how to get into the back side of things. These are just right there, I think. And uh, anyway, so we... Uh, we were busy figuring out how the lines of code were working and whatnot. And eventually, of course, you know, just like it is nowadays, we're working, you know, at the convenience store. And uh, the young one, well, I think he was like 15 years old. Uh, oh, yeah, not only did he figure all that stuff out, he also figured out how to take uh, Atari cartridges. And he made a board and lined them all up and where he can play them on his Commodore 64. He figured out how to do all that. Uh, just, you know, we were just like, wow, <laughs> how'd you do that? <laughs> but anyway, yeah, those were way back when. Not quite like it is today. These gaming rigs they got nowadays, you know, easily run over $1,000. And we're not even talking about getting close to the uh, to the rest of the rig. In other words, the, the keyboards, the headset, the game, the mouse, and all the rest of that. Yeah, you can spend quite a bit of money on this. Helped my son build his, um, his gaming rig he's got right now. And that one wasn't quite the chore as opposed to the one computer I was trying to build for my daughter. Boy, talking about it just one thing after another with headaches, trying to figure out what is going on with the thing. I did manage to get it put together, my daughter's, and um, could never get it to boot up, so I had to take it to somebody, and they figured it out for me. Put Windows on there, and didn't have to spend a whole lot of money at all to finish it up. Just over 50 bucks. In other words, I doubt I already done all the hard work. There's just one step somewhere in there that I've messed up at. I think I know where it's at. So my son was really, his computer was really easy to put together. It just seemed like just, just put it together and, whoa, look, it just comes on. Yep, life has been kind of busy here lately. So, um, that's the reason why I hadn't made a video in a moment. Saturday, like I say, it was a very long day to be up there 
from more or less, you know, before 10 o'clock till after 6. That's a long day. And these kids were, some of these kids were playing the bulk of that time. Yes, bulk of that time. Speaking of that sort of thing, they also ran into technical issues where the game would crash. And there's rules when that sort of thing happens. Yeah, so then you basically start over. So when you're in a tournament, and let's say uh, you're ahead, and you have to start over, yeah, after spending all that time, and you got it, yeah, it kind of disheartening for the folks which I understand you know you get part way through the game and you're ahead you're leading you know you're on a roll you know got that momentum going and then the game crashes and then you have to wait for the game to get restarted and so on and so forth get all detail to he did all the details worked out and then yeah yeah disheartening for the kids but it was good um, these these kids uh, working together Sitting on a, at a computer, talking to each other, working through the game. It was, a, a, I guess you might say, a, a good exercise in uh, teamwork. And the support that came right along with it. In between the kids and, the, of course, the kids that were uh, there at the, at the game supporting their, their schools. It was, uh, it was pretty nice to see it. And they were all, how can you say... Um, very kind to the other teams that were there, very supportive, uh, because a lot of these teams, in other words, from all over the state of Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, uh, you know, up north, south of us, just all the way around us, it was uh, a lot of teams that was there playing, and uh, some of these, you know, schools are big schools, smaller schools, you know, just everybody was there, you know, playing their, their teams, thought it was pretty nice. It's a different kind of uh, atmosphere, seeing it this way when you got uh different schools supporting other schools rooting for them cheering them on it's a good thing they knew what was going on because uh i was looking at it it's like i you know i don't know i know when the when it says win and <laughs> when it says lost <laughs> victory <laughs> i could pick those sort of things out got just a little bit of stingy right here but for the most part yeah i had no clue what's going on and uh, the other thing that I found just really interesting for those that maybe still have kids at home. So everybody's got their cell phones up there. Everybody's got chargers, wall sockets, everything in a play. There's cell phones all over the school. They're not attended either. <laughs> They're just sitting on the floor <laughs> and being charged. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Talk about a security nightmare. I mean, you know, if you bought a cell phone in recent history, Cell phones aren't cheap, <laughs> and they're sitting on the floor, either waiting to be stepped on or snatched up, depending on how you want to look at it. Some kids were losing their phones. Uh, somebody lost their watch. I could, uh, I kind of sort of understand it, but I'm the kind of guy, for instance, the, the watch rarely comes off or the ring. It's a rare moment. Uh, if I'm working on the car, yeah, that stuff comes off because it has a tendency for no other reason, get caught on things and then you get stuck, you know, because of tight quarters and whatnot. So it's best to not have those sort of things on. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it was what, oh, somebody lost their money too. That, that part was kind of funny because it was, they lost their money. Not that they lost their wallet, they lost their money. My money goes in my wallet, but yeah, but there you go. <laughs> it was very interesting. And here's the aftershave here. Um, you'd be surprised on how many of the ladies that was there at the event, not only there in support, but also playing. There's the, uh, restrictor there. Very eye-opening. And some, and, and my thinking, you know, because I'm old. <laughs> when you see kids that are about 6'3", playing computer games, it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> as tall as you are? <laughs> 
you know, football and basketball comes into mind. <laughs> it's like, why are you playing <laughs> computer sports? <laughs> I, you know what I would give to be that tall? Because, <laughs> I mean, these kids, you know, you're looking up, you know. But anyway, yeah, it was fun. I enjoyed myself, you know, watching all the kids, you know. It is something when you see, you know, these kids from different backgrounds, from different areas, you know, working together, talking about, you know, different things, you know, they're experiencing with the computers and the games and all that sort of thing. It is. It was really good to see them come together like they did. And by the way... Yes, nice shave. I know it's been a while since I've done one of these, and uh, you'll be seeing a lot more of these sort of shaves since I've made it through the slant series. Oh, and Steven Sprague, he did uh, send me a message to let me know that uh, Focus has another slant that's at Maggard's, and uh, I did order it. Uh, with shipping, it run me about $25. So in other words, not real expensive, but it's a very unique one. We'll see if I can wrap my mind around it, <laughs> and I'll do a video when it comes in and, and show you what all I'm talking about. I had a great time today. Uh, hope everybody's doing well. Stay healthy, stay safe, and smooth shades to you.